Hi guys. It is a hot, sticky, miserable, yuck, Jesus Christ, <laughs> lit your wrist fucking kind of day here in the end times. We're on uh, this sweaty, it is a Tuesday, I think we're at June 18, 2024, and uh, I am thrilled to announce, <clears throat> I think possibly for the first time in Humpty Dumpty Tribe history, <laughs> uh, we're going to bring, I thought he was a Gen Zer, but we just found out he is the last of the Millennials. And the last of the Millennials, this is a 27 year old who is washed up here at Bugs in a Jar Farm <laughs> and we're going to keep him around for a couple of weeks. Uh, and I want you to meet Grant Lee for all of you Civil War buffs. Uh, Grant Lee from Tennessee. And uh, we're just going to have a wide-ranging conversation about what it feels like to be a 27-year-old on planet Earth in the year 2024. Uh, just a random 27-year-old on planet Earth to see what's batting around in his mind. So Grant Lee, come on, say hi to the folks, and we'll see where this goes for the next 30 minutes or so. All right, Tim. It's good to be at Bugs in the Jar Farm. It's a beautiful spot here in New York. Um, it's crazy how I ended up here, I guess. I, uh, I was living in Colorado for about six years, working a desk job for the last four of those years, and on May 10th I quit because I was sick of doing the same thing every day and um, feeling like I wasn't really making the difference that I was hoping I was making in my job. And to be honest, the, the system that I was working for, the U.S. government, <laughs> had me... Um, kind of just trapped it just was a it was a way of feeling trapped because anyways I won't get into all that. so four years at a desk job <laughs> yeah and yeah and, I and you said hell with it. it yeah and, so, and you packed up your bags and you headed to oh we go New York yeah well what the hell was that about well because I knew I had to leave Colorado because it's expensive um, because I wasn't finding enough in common with people my age um, and because it's too far away from family. So my mom lives in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I didn't want to be there for several reasons. Um, because, well, first of all, you know, I love family, but it's good to have a little bit of space from family. Um, at the same time, I wanted to have some, some mountains because I need to be able to still ride my snowboard from time to time and go on hikes. And we'll see how much snowboarding you do in our weekend. <laughs> I definitely won't be the same. Not today. That. Definitely not today, but yeah, I felt like upstate New York in this area would be good, but I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any connections, and so I was just kind of roaming around different towns looking for places I liked, and I booked a night at Sam's Airbnb. I hadn't found any leads on a job or an apartment, um, and then I met Sam, and he, he was so kind to let me camp here in exchange for some work. Um, he also let me work a little bit for some, you know, to earn my keep and to be able to feed myself while I'm here. Um, so as things come together for me, I'm, I'm hanging out here and, and it's really freeing. And um, there's something about putting your hands on the earth and being outside and listening to the earth that is a lot better and helps me feel a lot less like a caged animal than when I'm working at a desk job. He stands in a cage here. Yeah, well, we're in a screen porch, but... We're getting away from the bugs and bugs. So I noticed you're, you're barefooted. You, you're saying <laughs> you are already becoming more feral? Uh, maybe. I mean, I've always been a really outdoorsy guy, but I think, uh, and I think that's another reason I had to leave Colorado, which is funny, because you think outdoorsy people go to Colorado, but it's like... I would rather take a week and actually enjoy it and relax than every weekend stressing about work and having to spend all my money every weekend and um, just how expensive it was and how cold it was. I, I remember I woke up to I woke up to feet of snow in May when I was packing my belongings and I was about to leave and so I, that was my final no thanks you know because I, I love snowboarding I love the snow but I don't need it all the time. <laughs> so. so here you are and uh, as I say I have never this might be the longest I have 
he's been hanging around for a little over a week that I've ever spent in the company of a uh, borderline millennial Gen Zer. So I noticed one thing that that I'm glad to notice. I have never heard this dude one time blame anything on those boomers. Maybe he is under his breath around me. <laughs> talk about talk talk about uh, how 27 year olds talk about 64 year olds when there's no 64 year olds around listening to you. Well, I'd say it's a mix. Um, I think a lot of my friends do blame boomers and are mad at the world and those people aren't aren't extremely successful to be honest and so you know of course I think you can you can blame governments but there's problems with every government there's problems with every generation I'm sure that my generation isn't perfect but at the same time I mean I also am not really your average 27 year old in terms of my opinion I um, I kind of like heavily rely on some of my spiritual concepts so first of all I believe in living in the present um, but I believe that consciousness is endless and so I feel like I've been a part of this human experience the whole time now be here now is his yeah be favorite here, book. be here now is probably my Bible as I would there say and um, so I love that book I love all, all the concepts in that book and um, but I do think that consciousness, as, as energy is never destroyed, it is always transferred. I believe that consciousness is the same, and that we as humans have done some incredible things as a species, you could argue, and we've also obviously done some extremely horribly awful things. Well, I thought that's what you meant when you said incredible. Well, yeah, but I mean, you mean well, there's, good there's, things. There, there are both, yeah, there's both beautiful things and mostly mostly majority terrible things that humans have created so I do think that if we can I mean I'm not okay this is where my apocalyptic optimism maybe plays in he, he's th this young man in by no way shape or form is a clueless moron I, I think I introduced him to the term he, he watched my video on uh, soft white <laughs> underbelly and, and was introduced to the term apocalyptimist so are you I don't is that think, what you consider yourself um it's hard to say I I think that I'm optimistic in that not that I think that you know humans are going to prevail and to heal but I'm optimistic that consciousness is transferred and that and you can figure it out and it, it doesn't have it won't be on earth or on this plane of existence but if it gets figured out in consciousness eventually so it's our part to do the best and be the best we can right now because it's never gonna get wherever you are when earth is destroyed you're gonna end up you're I just feel like it's not your way out I mean I don't know if it's heaven or hell or anything else but I, I do kind of I don't know. I just don't think it ends with your death as a human. So that's that's I guess where I'm at is that I don't I don't necessarily think that humanity is ever going to be able to save itself. I do think humanity is fucked. But I also think that that's not the end of consciousness. Okay, so you are an apocalypse. Sure. Okay, he's an apocalypse. We're, we're, I, I, I told don't really, him, I don't have an education about this stuff. I uh, <laughs> what, what I told Grant was. Uh, that I wanted really to do this interview so he could so he could listen to it in five years and laugh till he pissed his pants <laughs> uh, after he uh, I hate the sound of my own voice so that's gonna be hard but it'll be interesting see he's actually a southern boy like me but he doesn't have a it, it, you don't have a quite southern accent man. it's because I've lived all over so <clears throat> well, so have I well, let's, uh, well I mean I've lived in mostly Colorado for you know, for six years, they don't have yeah. any accent out there. Yeah. So yeah. I probably sound like those people. <laughs> so, uh, but how how much time would you say you consider? Well, not consider, but 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 how much time have you devoted to studying the the uh, state of the planet? Well, I've definitely taken some classes in college where I feel like the professor probably would fall in line with the Doomer or you know something like them because you know, and that was at a Christian college yeah it was this yeah 
So you, you had Doomer Professor, or is that a Christian college? Well, they didn't call themselves that. But they basically, like, drew very much attention to kind of how fucked we are without necessarily saying we're fucked. Uh, and so I think a lot of people do that, is they they don't call themselves a Doomer, but they constantly... I mean, society is, is obsessed with the apocalypse and with the end of time. Like, it's all the new movies. And it's everywhere if you look around. There's, there's like... I was at a, the MoMA in New York just a few days ago, one of the main exhibits at the MoMA that was a rotating exhibit was a makeshift, like a pretend fallout shelter. Oh, really? Like you walk into this fall and it had all the things you need for an apocalypse. And it's almost like fetishizing the Doomer. Like it's it's really getting more popular, I think. And people just aren't calling it what you're calling it. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it's well, it's rooted in entertainment right now. I don't know how entertaining it's going to be. Yeah, right? So, and uh, that's what's so crazy is, like, we human... And it's also, like, all over the internet, you'll see memes of, like, the last meme on Earth. It'll be, like, the asteroid destroying the Earth, and it'll be some joke about just, you know... Did you watch Don't Look, Look Up? Yeah, I watched Don't Look Up. What do you think of that? I think it's, I mean, pretty accurate. Did you like the ending? I can't remember. Did they all die? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I did like. Yeah, that. they all died. I think it would have been a shitty, a shitty ending if they didn't. Yeah, and that's kind of how I feel about it. They <laughs> they sat around uh, having a meal together. But they did it on purpose. It, 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 yeah, just uh, yeah, and, and they were enjoying it while they still can. It, absolutely, and I think that you know, regardless of when we're fucked, human, human, the human experience is going to be over soon. And so that's why it was a waste of time to stay at my desk job, is because, okay. you know, it's a, it's a waste of time to, to not enjoy your life. And I mean, I'm, I don't have a lot of money right now. I don't really know what's next. I have an apartment that I've got in July. But other than that, I, I'm a free man and I'm, I'm like happier than I've ever been. So. There you go, brother. Yeah. Uh, we will, we will see where it goes so uh so uh it, it, it seems like you're 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 pretty uh sanguine about the uh opinion that the human experience uh might be coming to a close here and, and get out there and enjoy it while you still can yeah so you figured that out yeah. Already at age 27. <laughs> a lot of people go to their graves never figuring out. So he's way ahead of me, man. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't here till I was 49. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, well, and also, like, I do believe in nurturing my, nurturing the future <clears throat> of whatever this experience, like, becomes. It's, it's my job to nurture it for myself. And, and I don't, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't have kids. I'm not a breeder, as you yeah, guys would say. We're gonna get to this. Who knows? Subject. I mean, but what I'm saying is, I think it's my duty to make sure that this human experience can be as enjoyable as possible for young people, but also helping them understand that very thing. I, uh, I think he'd been here about one day. This is before he watched the soft white underbelly. <laughs> uh, what was your comment? I, I want to meet a woman, make make lots of art, lots of food, and lots of babies. Was Not your, lots of babies. Okay, lots of art and lots of food and a few and babies. babies. That is what, I, well, I don't know, when you're a young man and you're living in the present, that's a very desirable thing. Um, and... You know, you see, I, I see a lot of my friends that have kids, and many of them are very happy. Um, and so that, and I also is, am a person who enjoys people, and enjoys working with children, and speaking with children. And so that's my bias there, is that I, that would be, I understand your viewpoint of it being a very selfish, and maybe off, even awful thing to do. Um, but at the same time, I think that, there's so much joy that can be shared between a child and a parent. <laughs> and so I think that, mm -hmm. that that's that's an experience that I know that parents often share that they're you know, that they would never ever take back. So. Until you realize you've committed 
your own child to a future of hellfire and brimstone and, I guess and zombie I'll go, apocalypse. I guess I'll go back to shed and boiling <laughs> skies and water and wildfires and droughts and floods and formation. Up until that day, I'm sure it's going to be a joyous experience. I know, Sam. I guess I'm also go to go back to my apocalyptic optimism. I think we have this much more time than you think we have. There you go. And so that's mm -hmm. another part of my apocalyptic optimism is that yes, we're fucked, but I think that like at the soonest my grandkids are fucked if we know how to live correctly. Meaning without relying on civilization. So I, that's what I'm kind of working towards is eventually getting a piece of land, finding a way to make it really private, and you know interacting with society at my own free will until there no longer is a society and, to interact with. And that's when you get the AR-15. And that's when I. That's when I go home. Bar the packing, door. Uh, yeah. Pack and heat. And, yeah, and then I and then I protect my kids until we're all till it's over, and because I think that and and that sounds like an attractive life to you. No, but I think that in <laughs> our in our every moment, it's our responsibility to do the best that we can. And I think that yeah, I mean your def definition of that might change, right? So who knows what the given circumstance might bring? So maybe the best thing you can do is just sit there and die together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, I'm going to be 91 in the year 2050, like, like, like I'm really going to be here in 2050, but you're going to be, well, 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 you're 27 in 2024, oh, so uh, <laughs> what, 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 are, what are you going to be? You're, you're going to be uh, 20, uh, what, what 20? do we got? Tell, tell, you're 27 now, you're, you're going to be 53. Yeah. You're going to be 53, so if you have kids, let's say you have a couple of 30-year-old kids, I probably might even be thinking about being a grandfather. What is, have you ever spent much time trying to conjure up a vision of what your life is going to look like in the year 2050? No, but then again, when I was a kid, I, I could never conjure up uh, this, what's happening here. So, you know, you can't read the future. Uh, you're, you're, but you can, I don't like the news. I don't like the, yeah, I mean, it's it's looking bad. But I think that, like, you talked about this in your soft right underbelly, is the, like, slow collapse. It all depends on your definition of slow and your definition of collapse, I guess. Yeah, it's, uh, but right now, I, so I, I, do I hear the, the, the three bedroom house in the suburbs with the white picket fence and the, No, I'm not interested in that. No. So what's your next step here, young man, after we... I have to yeah. pay off my student loans as fast as I can, and then I have to save up money and buy a piece of land. You're I mean, paying I, student loans ahead of buying a piece of land in priority? Well, I think because I, I'm going to be... I'm not debating you, I'm just well, curious. Well, I'm going to be saving, I'm going to be budgeting for saving some money while I'm in the process of paying off my sin. Because I, I just feel like having any kind of debt to society is going to be the thing that's going to allow them to track me down and yeah. follow my ass forever. And so that's why it's a priority is because it's the one thing that I'm really committed to that I, I made that commitment when I was, and they every college does this, they make you commit when you're young and stupid to a extremely um, high loan that you don't understand when you're that age. Um, so, anyways, it, it's I'm sorry. I got, I, I'm I got facing a good, the same issue with Medicare as I, gonna, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't change. Doesn't get any better. I, I got, got a good deal for my education. I just it, for comparatively, but at the same time, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I'm, I would still do it all over again, but the system's not a great. Did that. you do? He, you have a BA in English. Yeah. Yep. 
did you get your money's worth from your I felt college that, education? I felt that I went to a small private school that was really dedicated to providing a quality education. It was a Christian school, but so that was a little weird socially and in a few ways. Um, but overall, they were interested in providing me with a high quality education. So I, and I got to travel to Europe and like multiple times because of that um, institution. And uh, yeah, they provided me with a lot of so you, so you got your so you're okay. I would you say like, like you got your money. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I would. Say, I mean, I know it's an English degree, and everyone hates on that. But my ability to advocate for my ability to learn, and also I have experience in social work and and you know outdoors. So um, I feel like people don't understand that if you can read, you can learn anything. If you can write and take notes on what you've read and comprehend it, you can learn anything you want to. Right now, I'm, I'm spending each morning while I have my coffee, I look into a topic, whatever one pops into my brain. So I have a little section in my Google Drive for carpentry, and I know almost nothing about carpentry, but I'm starting to um, figure out what I'm gonna do to, what's a basic structure I can build it. And then I have another topic for gardening, and then I have another one for poetry, and another one, you know, it just the list goes on. And, and I think too many people don't understand that you don't have to be, you're not going to be a professional basketball player if you dedicated your life to basketball today and just did that. Uh -huh. But you could have a joyous experience by learning and experiencing a lot of things. Well, carpentry and gardening are too good. Absolutely. Too and especially with what we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, so tell us about your trip to Manhattan last week and your, as part of your Doomer training. How did, what, what did you think about Manhattan as compared to Bugs in a Jar Bar? Growing up, or when I was younger, in my you know late teens, early 20s, I, I've loved um, visiting New York because I have a good friend who lives in Brooklyn. Um, so it's been a good time. Historically, you go out, there's fun places to dance, there's you know lots of beautiful people, and um, it's a good time usually there's you know it's usually a lot of fun um i had a lot of for, fun for this three time days. Too. yeah i went i went for like four days this four time days. i think but this yeah just this past week i went to manhattan and brooklyn i was just between those two all the the four days and um it was a lot of fun still but it was like eye-opening even the drive in through the um through upstate i was noticing all the dead trees <laughs> Yeah, I, and that I, was I'm like, already training him to pick up on all the dead trees. And he's Sam's right. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of there's dead trees. A lot trees, of dead trees. A lot of like there was, this whole hillside, like a massive hillside, and it was all dead. And I was like, oh, well, would Sam say that? So that was kind of the first thing right before I got to the city, where I was like, uh oh. I mean, I don't know. You just notice how different life is from bugs in a jar. Everyone's like stressed out about everything and little things are a big deal to like my friend who is constantly working he, he works his ass off and he's a great guy um but i was noticing i was like the rush that the city has put him under like he's he's like stressed out about every little thing that yeah. is you know coming his way that's not you know perfectly going his way and it's like i mean that's just what capitalism teaches you is that you have to do this you have to do it right and you have to do it right now and if you don't you're a fucking idiot and like i don't know i just think I, I, to come back to Bugs in a Jar after being in the city where everyone's stressed, everyone, I couldn't go on a walk through the city and just like, like I would here where I, I walk slow through the woods and I like it, <laughs> but in Manhattan, I, I was just doing my normal slow walk and uh, people were getting running pissed. you over. People were getting pissed. They, I, they weren't running me over because I'm like, you know, I'm not going to let people just run me over, but they were like, I was clearly like an oddball and... I don't know. Just, yeah, I, I heard I this guy. He up. didn't think I heard him in Wegmans yesterday. Yeah, I, I heard him say, "Could you pick it up, buddy?" Yeah, he, he was behind me with it, and he wanted to get. And I was walking yeah, bro, too like, slow through Wegmans for him. I'll that admit, I get I get kind of annoyed when like you know some big giant old dude just like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> but you can't. But like at the same time, I'm not gonna. I don't know. I'm just. It's. I get, I'm just gonna deal with it. He's enjoying his day. I have to figure out my day. I don't. And that's the other thing about not blaming boomers. I, I don't think you should blame anybody for anything. He said he's never told anybody to fuck off. I, say, I, I, tell, well, I tell three people a day to go fuck themselves. 
Yeah. In 27 years. I well, think there's one person that you kind of told you to go, yeah. go fuck himself, but yeah. we, won't, we don't have to get into your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not counting him, so you really uh, haven't told that many people to go fuck themselves. Well, I've definitely, um, you know, I've firmly disagreed with people, and they've kind of told me to go fuck myself. There you go. But I don't, because I don't, like, compromise really if, if it's bullshit. <laughs> Like, I, I just was gaslighted a lot at my last job, and then my supervisor ended up hating me for not letting her gaslight me. And yeah. Anyways. Nothing a gaslighter hates worse than people not people putting up your gaslight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, call, I said, you're gaslighting me, and then that. You oh, boy, that, that you really can. helped. I said, this is gaslighting right now, and I explained it to her what she was doing. <laughs> she, got, she loved that. But anyways. <coughs> yeah, so it's been an interesting time. I'm glad to be at Bugs in a Jar, and... Manhattan is a crazy place. There's, I, I don't, I don't know, like what what would happen if you put a crackhead out in the woods, like I mean, they, there's plenty of crackheads out well, here in the woods. I'm afraid. I know, but I just think that like, yeah, I know what well, you're saying. Well, too yeah. many people who grew up in the city, they don't know that this kind of thing exists. Yeah. They don't know that you can't. Like, I was telling someone I was sleeping in a tent for a couple weeks, and they were like. You're sleeping in that? And I was like, yeah, it's like I have my bed in there. And it's a nice tent. I have it's a lot like of gazelle space. free. And, yeah, it's a nice tent. I have my, you know, all I, what I need. And it's nice. The weather is good. And I, I can cook outside. And I don't know. People just don't know that you can take it easy and it'll be all right. I think my friend who works multiple jobs, like, I think he thinks that life will end if he just stops working and just goes and does whatever he wants. I mean, and he'll be like, range. he thinks it's impossible. He thinks, oh, like, you, you got to have money to do that. And their answer is, like, you want to have a little bit of money, but you really just, the present moment typically always, in my experience, and I haven't been blessed with, like, a lot of, like, money or anything my whole life. So I just feel like the present moment has always provided me with what I've needed. And too many people can't understand that. All right, so what is your advice to your fellow 27-year-olds who uh, think that money is everything and, and, and toys and uh, all of that stuff and the latest smartphone and the latest pair of sneakers? What, what do you say to uh, your fellow 27-year-olds who are buying into that bullshit? Let it go. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I think... You'll highly regret it if you live your life with the sole intention to make a lot of money. I, and even if it's coming from a place of love because you want to set up your children or whatever for success, I think you'll regret not spending your hours um, being with them. Like my mom and I, I love that woman a lot. And we were very poor, but we spent a lot of time together. And I think that that. I'm going to look back and be grateful for that, even though we didn't have a lot. Um, and I think that there's too many people who, yeah, spend their time working for people who don't care about, or not even people, working for organizations and entities and things like that that don't have their, they don't care about things like love or a sense of presence or um, gratitude or you know those things that I think truly matter that make life worth living because I, you know I've had rich friends and poor friends growing up I, I had one friend who was extremely rich and he was kind of like it was kind of weird how rich he was but he and he knew it and so and he always said like you know I'm really freaked out by all this because it's like every question I, or every mistake I'll ever make has already been solved with money mm -hmm. and I'm terrified of the world so it's like uh, there's different problems with with money and without and I think it all comes down to do you have an understanding of love presence those kinds of things that matter <laughs> all right young ladies are you hearing this we have an idealistic uh, <clears throat> so he is a he is in the market <laughs> I'm a single guy but I, don't I don't know if he's looking for a Doomer chick or not. Are you looking for a Doomer chick? I don't know. I, no, like, you have to meet her. Let's. I, I just want someone who's like, a gets it. Po yeah, someone who sees 
things kind of how I'm describing it, you know, like, clear, like, we, we want to make art and food. I mean, a lot of art, a lot of food, and very few babies. So you would, you would have no problem getting in a relationship with, with a woman who absolutely was committed never to being a parent. That's a hard question. Uh, I don't know. That's a hard question. Because you know, usually it's the, it's the flip side that the, that the, the man is more likely to be opposed to that and the woman decides to, uh, is it more important to be with this man and not have kids yeah. or, or to let him go yeah. and make some compromises in other areas so I can get a sperm donor. And I've definitely not been, I've been, I've, I've been attracted to a person who told me they hated kids and then I was a lot less attracted to them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, like, I don't know. I'm and, not, so, and, and people are, in, 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 uh, but you don't have to, you can, yeah, who misunderstand, I, I, I don't hate kids. Right. I'm not a big fan of right. breeders. And so I don't know what that, how that would feel yeah. you know, for me. Yeah. But and so you can't blame it on the kid. But again, like I said, I, I live in the present. Yeah. And that doesn't mean ignoring it. Yeah, the I, I would say breeders don't live in the future. <laughs> uh, generally speaking, uh, breeders do not look very far ahead into the future. Well, I, uh, just because I live in the present and very much you know, I, I, I consider the future, and I consider the past, but I make my decisions here and now. Uh, but and I, yeah. Anyways, that's like a whole. I could talk about that. And for right. anybody in this general neighborhood of the Finger Lakes of New York, this young man needs some work. <laughs> till he finds a real job, so he will actually uh, come do some work. Twenty All bucks right. an hour. Twenty bucks an hour. This man will actually work in the hot sun. Don't make me do anything too weird. Uh, well, All we right. can go s scrape slime out of a pond. That's not too weird, is it? No. Mm. I meant like, you know, creepy stuff. <laughs> Just no creepy stuff. <laughs> All right, well, Grant Lee, we do appreciate you sharing these uh, thoughts of a not-so-average 27-year-old and. I want to hear some comments, uh, particularly <laughs> from 27-year-old women who uh, me too, man. Who, who want to uh, get together with this man and tell him, let's don't have any kids together. Let's make a lot of art and food and let someone else make all the kids. Someone's going, I can fix him. Yes. <laughs> fix this young man. <laughs> all right, guys. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you, Sam.